Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today is the Retro Vintage Halloween Collab, Part 2, hosted by me, hi, and my friend, the fabulous Indie Annie Jones. We had so much fun with Part 1, we decided to continue the fun. We have some incredibly talented friends joining us. You'll find a link to the playlist, as well as a link to Annie's channel in the description box. Let's get into it. I've cut a small flat spot on the top and bottom of a 3-inch and a 2-inch styrofoam ball to make them easy to stack. I grab a handful of Crayola air dry clay and I'll knead it for a couple minutes and then I'll flatten it with my brayer. Once I have it nice and thin, I cover both balls with the clay. I add the clay in sections, pressing it firmly onto the ball and then I roll it on the table to smooth it out a wee bit. I push three toothpicks about halfway down into the top of the large ball, and then I'll push the smaller ball on top of that. I roll a small clay snake, which I'll wrap around to fill in the gap between its head and body. I use a paintbrush handle to roll over the clay snake to incorporate it into the clay that's already on the balls. I'll dampen the clay slightly, which helps me to smooth it, and I'll continue until it looks like it's one solid piece. Now I roll another thicker clay snake for his arms. I'll cut the snake in half lengthwise, and I'll push them into place. I'll incorporate the arms by rolling my brush handle over them, just like I did with the neck. I use a circle cookie cutter to make the brim of his hat. This is just some of the extra flattened clay I had from earlier. And then I dampen the top of his head and push the brim into place. I apply a good amount of pressure to ensure that the brim sticks. And then, you know, I make some adjustments until I'm happy with the shape of it. I roll a small ball of clay that I cut in half for his cheeks. And I'll pop those onto his face, again, pressing firmly and using my brush handle once more to incorporate the clay. Once again, I've rolled a small ball of clay and I'll roll it into a cone shape for his nose, which I'll place right between his cheeks. And then I'll smooth that with my brush too. So having rolled a thicker snake of clay, I'm now gonna roll that into a larger cone for the top of his hat. And I just cut off any excess. Okay, I insert a toothpick top center of his head and I'll slide the cone over it. And then I'll smooth that with my brush just like I did with the other clay. I'm using a skewer to poke a hole through his hand for his staff. Then we'll get set aside to dry for a couple of days. We'll come back to him. In the meantime, we'll move on to DIY number two, this adorable witch hat tray. So I start off making the paper medallion embellishment. I'll link a video with more in-depth instructions for this. I actually made this project about a month ago when I was making the creep clay sculpt. So to make the medallion, I scored both of my three by 12 inch paper strips every half inch and I accordion fold them. I glue the ends together, forming a loop. I press the center down, forming the medallion. And I'm gonna hot glue a piece of a craft stick to the back side to hold it in place. I flip it over and I glue a cardstock circle to the front and I'll glue a decorative one on top of that. I used the 31 for the witch hat. This one is from the one that I used for the creep that you see here. To make the cone, I'm using a 12 by 12 piece of black cardstock, and I've tied some string to a pencil to use as a compass. I hold the end of my string at one corner of the cardstock, then I draw a curved line from one corner to another. You want to keep your string taut while you draw that curve, and I cut the paper along that line. This will give me an 11 inch tall cone. So I roll the top into a point, and I'll hot glue it into shape. So I'm just going to add a clip at the bottom to hold it while I work my way down the cone.
To embellish, I'll start at the bottom by gluing some garland rope to the very bottom of the cone. And I cut away the excess. I'm going to hang on to that because I'm going to use that in a couple minutes. I glue the medallion to the center of the cone. I cut two strips of ribbon and I'm going to pinch them at the bottom to cinch them. And I'll glue those behind the medallion. I rolled up that extra piece of garland that I cut off and I'm just going to glue it right at the top of the medallion. Okay, next I spray paint this Dollar Tree pizza pan with matte black spray paint. I decorate the edges with strokes of Ceramco white acrylic paint and then I'll dip dot in the black section with Ceramco bittersweet orange. And then just set the cone in the middle of the pan and you have this adorable Halloween witch hat party tray. This one is quick, easy, and super budget friendly. I decorated this container a couple years ago. It was pre-YouTube, so I don't have film of it. But basically, I just painted a pepper can and added vinyl lettering and cutouts. I also have a bunch of Halloween pics, some I bought, some I made. And I printed some retro images onto cardstock and I cut them out. All the images are either from Google or Pinterest. I painted a handful of skewers with Ceramco charcoal and I'm going to glue my images to them. I'm also adding strips of cardstock across the back as extra support and I'll glue all the images to the skewers. I fill the canister with a handful of black paper shred and I'll arrange all my goodies. I stagger the height of each of them and then I'll fuss with it until I'm happy with it. I love a fun assemblage, especially Halloween and Christmas. I love to make them and I love to look at them. They're so cute and really inexpensive to make. They're really great pieces if you love, you know, the whole vintage thing. Look, I printed up this little Ouija board. I'll stick that in there. And I'm just clipping the skewers to size. These are just some scrap pieces of baker string that I had left over, so I just bunched them together with a pipe cleaner. And there you go, how cute. I love this. I just think this is adorable and so cheap to make. Okay, so our wee clay fella is dried. Not only is he well cracked, but for some reason, his one arm has slightly pulled away from his body. First time that's happened, but that's okay. We'll make it work. With ceramic coat white, I paint the tip of his hat his face, hands, and I paint a triangle on the front of his belly and everything will get two coats. I paint the brim of his hat and the rest of his body with Ceramco charcoal. Just gonna outline that white section so I don't accidentally paint over it, because I will. So this will get two coats as well. To emulate a candy corn, I paint the bottom of his hat and the bottom of his belly with ceram coat straw. But later, I go over it with Folk Art Daybreak to lighten it up a bit. I just thought the straw was a little too dark. And you know, everything gets two coats. Of course, the next section of his hat and belly will be orange. So I'm going to use Bittersweet Orange here. I'm sure you can tell that he's clearly inspired by Johanna Parker's work. Just love her. I use the Dale to dip dot his eyes with ceramic coat drizzle gray. Right above his cheek, dead center. I dot his mouth with ceramic coat charcoal. I want him to have a surprised look. And I'm going to paint his nose with charcoal too. See, he's getting that Johanna Parker face. 
and I'm going to go ahead and give him white rings around his nose. I dot the center of his eyes and I'll outline them with charcoal as well. He gets surprised eyebrows and he'll get some lashes too. I give him three dots above his eye with a skewer. And his eyes will get some white highlights also. I'm using bittersweet orange to dry brush his cheeks. And in Johanna Parker fashion, I'll outline his cheeks. He also gets a drizzle gray shadow right below his mouth. I'll be using Folk Art Floating Medium to add some shading. I dip my brush into the medium and I'm going to side load with drizzle gray. I'll work the paint into the bristles by stroking it on my plate. So first, I'm going to shade some curves along the bottom of his face, just like little U-shapes. Then I'll add curves at the top of his face, upside down U-shapes. And I'll follow through connecting the top and the bottom curves with like a curved line. You'll see. And I'm going to do that all the way around his head. I'm also going to shade the white of his hat and his belly with drizzle. I use Ceramco Calypso Orange to shade the yellow sections. I use Maricana Cadmium Orange to shade the orange sections. I'm going to use Rain Gray to give his jacket opening like a little lapel and I'll do his cuffs in Rain Gray as well. With the tip of a skewer, I dot around the dividing lines of the colors on his hat and belly, and I'll dot his lapel and cuffs alternating white, yellow, and orange. For his tie, I'll paint the edges of this crepe paper with Daybreak using a cosmetic sponge, and I'm going to tip the edges with black ink. Then I'll accordion fold it, and I'll twist a black metallic chenille stem around the center. I dry brush him with ceramic coat rain gray and I give him a complete coat of Mod Podge to seal him. I'm applying the Mod Podge with a cosmetic sponge to be nice and gentle. I've painted a face on this wee Dollar Tree pumpkin, which will be his trick or treat bucket, so I want to seal that too. And then I push a bit of pipe cleaner into the top of his bucket as a handle. 
And here's where the fact that his arm pulled away from his body is a lucky accident. His bucket slides right onto his arm. I attach his bow tie with some hot glue. And the final touch is his candy corn staff. I made this from Model Magic and a skewer, and then I added some baker string to decorate it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love him. Let me know what you think. Here's a final look at today's projects. I want to thank my friend, Indiani Jones, for co-hosting. Please be sure to check out her channel. She's infinitely creative and always so much fun to watch. And also, I want to thank all of my talented friends who are participating today. You're in for a vintage treat. Both the link to Annie's channel and the playlist are in the description box. And many, many thanks to all of you for all of your support and kindness. It is truly deeply appreciated. Annie and I will be hosting an upcoming vintage Christmas collab in the next few weeks too, so please stay tuned. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.